welcome again all to our webinar on savory snacks, which will talk about the switch to healthy snacks and a deep thank you for being here with us this morning. So before we dive in, a quick reminder on some practical aspects. So all attendees are on mute, but you can send questions in the chat anytime during the webinar. So really feel free to send us some questions. We will answer all your questions at the end. And if we don't have time to take all questions, we will answer you personally after the webinar. Great. So let's have a look to our agendas and speakers for today. So I'm pleased to introduce you to three speakers. Today, we are glad to welcome a guest speaker from Mintel, Ophélie Boucher, Associate Director at Mintel for Food and Drinks. So for those perhaps who may not know Mintel, it's a UK-based global market intelligence agency which provides market research, industry expertise, data insight, and so on. And today, Ophélie will present healthy snacks trends in the UK and discuss about the rising of the better for you trend and nutritional ingredients. Our second speaker is Rona Stein. It's our UK expert. Rona is a key account manager for the UK at Lima Grain Ingredients. She will highlight how our range can help design and reformulate recipes to obtain nutritional snacks and meet consumer expectations. And finally, Anne-Sophie Mayo-Godard, R&D application manager dedicated to breakfast cereal and snacks, will conclude with a presentation of our brand new product, a new maza flour for non-HFSS tortilla chips. So without further ado, let's start with Ophélie with a presentation of the LC snack trends. Thank you so much, Marine, for your um, introduction. So, and thank you so much, Limagran, for um, inviting me to, to speak today. So today we'll talk about um, the healthy snacking trends in the UK. We will look together at the latest consumption trends in the UK, but also what the opportunities are for uh, healthier formulation, healthier innovation, um, and what, what does the consumer expect on, on that point. Um, so I will start first with where consumption is, specifically for savory snacks like crisp um, and understanding, you know, what, what, are, what are the latest trends on uh, consumption in the UK. Um, it's actually quite interesting to see that for crisps uh, specifically, consumption has been uh, holding up really well over the past few years. I'll talk a little bit more about the context of inflation um, to, to back that up. But um, if we look at the latest numbers uh, when it comes to frequency of eating crisps, um, we see that um, crisps are still the highest um, consumed snack in the UK. In terms of frequency, so 17% of UK consumers eat crisps daily and 30% eat crisps uh, three to six times a week. And that's much higher than any other snack. So if you look at nuts or, or meat snacks or popcorn, What's also very interesting is um, that the frequency has been going up in the past few years. So the frequency went up uh, on, on the daily frequency from 15% in 2022 and uh, three, three to six times a week from 27% uh, in 2022. So really consumption that still, um, you know, the, the most important consumption, but also uh, going up. Um, and then the target of Crest consumption is still very much younger consumers. And I think that's something really important uh, to note here, because if you look at the, the frequency of eating of different types of snacks, again, you can see that for Crisp specifically, um, the, the consumption goes down as people age. Uh, so you've got 61% of the 16 to 34 that eat, eat um, crisp versus 28% uh, of uh, the older generation, 65 plus. And that's the frequency of three to uh, six uh, times a week. So it's really interesting to see that if you're a crisp manufacturer, obviously you're going to target those younger demographic and the healthy eating trend will also be different for those younger demographic compared to uh, older. And then let's back that up in the context of inflation, because obviously crisp, as well as every other food category in the UK and in the rest of Europe, has suffered from uh, price rises over the past few uh, years. So you've got here the CPI inflation rates uh, for the past two years. So in red is um, this uh, 2023, so the year previously, and then in orange is 2024, so the year uh, previous to uh, March 2024. 
So you can see that Chris wasn't the highest, um, uh, didn't see the highest rises in, in prices. Um, you have things like bakery products, ice cream, yogurt that had much higher rates of inflation. But still in the year previous to 2023, you had almost 18% of inflation. So that's a massive number. It's come down since then, but we're still at 9.4 as of March 2024. So the latest um, inflation numbers. And obviously, this is very high for uh, um, a category that is a staple. But what we're noticing is that actually that hasn't impacted uh, consumption yet. Um, so today, if you look at the two ends of the spectrum, so people who say they're struggling financially versus people who are okay at the moment with uh, inflationary pressures, the difference is 45% of them consume uh crisp versus 48%. So there's not a massive uh, difference. And we can say that consumption is holding up quite well. So um, then I'm going to have a look at the opportunities for better for you attributes uh, within this category. Why are we even looking at that? Because consumers are telling us they want to see much more of this. Um, so in the UK, you can see 71% of UK consumers looking for uh, products that have better for you attributes. Um, then if you look at the specific type of attributes, you have things like low salt, low fat, uh, high in protein, high in fiber, that bit lower, but still, you know, a quarter of uh, consumers telling us they're interested in that. Innovation has followed, especially from the biggest uh, brands. So we've seen a big push, especially as part of the uh, non-HFSS uh, regulations, to push out more snacks that are low in salt, low in fats. Uh, but at the moment, it's been mainly the biggest brands. So you've got examples here from uh, Pringles, uh, reformulated with less salt, 25% less. Um, Jacob's mini ch cheddars, which um, are now 30% less in uh, fats. And then even for categories like pop chips, which were always uh, position as healthier, uh, you, you're getting this wave of reformulation. Uh, so this example from Popworks with 30% uh, less fats. And this is um, in a context where consumers are telling us they're, they're finding more products that they think are healthier. Um, and consumers are also telling us that even when they're looking for products to treat themselves, they want to see uh, products that are reformulated. But if you look at the wider market, innovation hasn't really followed suit. So, you know, biggest brands, yes, but actually the wider um, innovation launches are not necessarily uh, doing so. And they've been really focused at the moment uh, still on making products suitable for everyone. So things like vegetarian, uh, low allergen, gluten free are still in percentage of launches what is really taking over uh, this market still. Um, you've got obviously quite a big chunk of innovation that is looking at no additive preservatives, so naturalness, which is a way to also um, innovate on, on health, obviously. But then if you look at just the criteria like high fiber, low fat, um, they're much lower. So less than 10% of products are actually making those uh, types of claims. But obviously, when we're talking about health, it's not just about the health claim specifically and what the consumers in the end are looking for is strong signals that a product is uh, healthy. So nutritional labels are also a, a very quick and simple way to communicate that to consumers. In the UK today, we've got 44% of launches that feature, um, of snack launches again, uh, that feature traffic light system on pack. Um, and this is much higher than the rest of Europe. So I did the same uh, kind of uh, proportion. And in the rest of Europe, we are about 18%, 19% of products that are using a Nutri-Score. Um, and in the UK, front of pack nutrition label is very important. So 63% of UK consumers agree that it's a really good indicator of the healthiness of a product. Um, and it actually rises when you look at consumers that are specifically trying to lose weight or that are trying to eat healthily all the time. So for them, more than the health claim, the nutritional labels are really important to, to look at. And then to finish, I look at opportunities for healthier base ingredients because 61% of UK consumers tell us that they want to see more savory snacks with um, different base ingredients. And then when we ask them what type of ingredients or what type of claims are they interested in for those uh, 
different base ingredients. They are looking at um, claims like high in fiber, high in protein, and they tend to want those for daytime occasions. So occasions where actually health makes a lot of sense. Um, Today, the consumer that is interesting specifically in, uh, in, in these high protein, high fiber snacks tend to be quite younger again. Um, so I laid out here the different claims um, and you can see that for high protein specifically, the 35 to 44, so millennials are really keen on uh, these types of positioning. But you can see a similar uh, interest for high in fibers. So the, the top ranking consumers tend to be 35. Maybe you can expand uh, high in fiber to 54 and low in calorie as well. So a, a specific interest from consumers that are uh, within those age groups. And then what's interesting is that the share of snack launches that it are using legumes, pulses, uh, so alternative ingredients to uh, potatoes, are actually growing quite a lot. They grew a lot from 2019 to 2023. Um, and since then, they've declined again. So there's a discrepancy between what consumers want to see and what the market is, um, is giving them. So I just put a few examples of um, brands that are actually doing it. So lentil puffs, for example, with uh, cricket protein. Or um, the second uh, product that is using soy flour to make crisps, popped crisps. Um, and the third product is just beans uh, that are roasted uh, and, 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 you know, positioned around this high fiber, high protein uh, trend. So just to uh, sum up on, on, on these points. So first of all, uh, we've established again that crisp consumption um, is really holding up, even in a context of inflation. Crisps are consumed um, more frequently than other snacks, and the frequency has actually increased over the past year. Um, we, we, we saw that consumers are asking for more uh, better for you attributes and there is some innovation that is targeting that but generally the innovation on the UK market is targeting other attributes like no allergen, vegetarian, naturalness, uh, so there's potentially more push on that side. But in the end, what we're seeing from consumers is that they really appreciate lab labels that are summing up, summing it all up for them. So simplifying uh, the communication, like obviously the traffic uh, light label. And to finish, uh, we see more opportunities for um, healthier base ingredients. So legumes, pulses, because consumers are asking for that. They're asking for uh, positioning around those ingredients that are high in protein, high in fiber. Um, but then the innovation has followed suit for a while, but is now declining. So something uh, to watch out for. So thank you for your time. I'll now um, move on to uh, Rona for, um, for her, her presentation on lim limigrants ingredient and how they can fit within that trend. Good morning, everybody. Um, so um, I work for Limigrain in the UK um, as a care account manager. Um, and we'll be discussing um, just an introduction to Limigrain um, and then go over to one of our products. Um, so Limigrain is part of a larger group of companies. Um, it um, started about 20 odd years ago um, and has currently a turnover of about 215 million with about 330 um, thousand tons of, of processed flowers and cereals. Um, we have production sites in Europe. Um, so uh, there's one in the Netherlands and five in France with about 397 employees of which 27% are women. We are in all of these sectors. Um, so right from the bottom, wheat and maize, flour and grits, uh, which all of you in the snack industry will be familiar with. Bakery ingredients, um, improvers and mixers, matter flour, um, anything to do with like a tortilla chip. Functional flours, um, which add benefit water binding texturization. Uh, puff grains and toasted ingredients. These are very much in breakfast cereals and in um, cereal bars. And then snack pellets, which you would have had some introduction in the previous part with Ophelia. Um, and I'll delve into those a little bit deeper. 
So recipe challenges um, with um, the non-HFSS is always um, available. Um, and these um, really come to the fore when we start looking at the bases that we play with as well as the seasonings that we play with. So snacking is all about pleasure. Um, then second to that, um, as we've seen, is all about health and well-being. I want to be able to indulge, but I also want to be able to feel that I'm doing it healthily. And the recipe challenges that we have is in lowering salt and lowering sugar and increasing proteins and increasing fibers in the snack. Um, those come with their own challenges um, in that um, something like a pop chip or something like a pellet, um, the higher your protein, um, the more crispy, the more crunchy it becomes and you don't get quite the mouthfeel, so you've got to innovate. We can do all of that for you. Um, and all you need to do is contact us and um, we'll put you in contact with the R&D team and get the project going. So if we look at the next generation of snacking, we have nutritional solutions for snacks um, in all of our segments from grits and flowers right through to puffed and toasted inclusions. Everything that we do is clean label and can be gluten free. Um, Everything that we offer um, will fall into these categories. So we can do HFSS compliant ranges. Um, we have pellets um, that are low fat, low salt. Uh, we have a pulse range, um, which Anne Sophie will talk to you about. And then we also have rich in fiber and protein ingredients. So healthier pellets. Um, some of them that we have here um, are low salt recipes. And so those are less than 2% um, in the pellet of salt in the pellet range. And those are just some of the examples that we have. And um, then we also have low fat solutions. So this means that it's a pellet that, that can actually be processed with hot air. So no frying, um, and this reduces your fat almost completely. Also, your final fat level is around 10 to 15 percent. And so those are some of the products that we have in that range. Um, they may be familiar to you. And then the other ones that we have um, are we also have pulse based um, pellet range. Um, these are new and we'll be launching those at SnackX. So if you're there, please pop by. Um, so those will be um, chickpea based. The example that you have on your screen there um, is um, the Rick Wave 650. I've played with this and it is a lot of fun and also has a great texture. The next category I want to talk to you about is puffed and popped snacks. Now your potato micro pellet is obviously most popular. And um, going back to what Ophelia said, um, potato crisps are first and foremost in the UK market. So we have a micro pellet that allows you to actually come into that market with a potato base. We also have maize micro pellets, fava beans, um, chickpea, um, these we'll also have at Snack Hicks, um, the multigrain, gluten-free micro pellets, and then finally we also have flaking grits. Um, so these really are easy to use, do not need frying, um, and therefore have a low fat and low calorie crunch. When we come to adding fiber and protein. We have some functional flours that allow us to do this. We've got our innocence whole grains, um, whole grain maize, oat, barley, rye, wheat. And we also have our innocence pulses. Um, and those will be chickpea, fiber, etc. Um, what these allow you to do is to add fiber, be um, 
which has also an antioxidant activity, decrease your cholesterol levels. Anything to do with oat is good. And it also gives you a higher satiety level, because um, as you all know, fiber is good for our gut. Also easy to implement in your snack formulations. If you're interested in this, once again, make contact with us and we'll help you out. On the nutritional, on, on the pulses, you have the nutritional boost um, in that it's added protein, has a great taste, there is no after bitterness, um, and you can also add a higher protein content to your product. So the little table that you have on the right hand side is just two of the examples that we have. Um, and in direct extrusion, for instance, they give you flowing the pro processability. Um, in stackable chips, they give you hydration. Um, in other words, your sheeting is actually pretty moist and, and easy and doesn't stick. In your pellets, you have flowability. Um, and in your text mix, like the tortilla chips, um, once again, hydration sheeting. On the Innocence Pulses, um, the benefit there, because these products can be quite, can be quite sticky, which has delays in your production facilities, is that they allow for hydration sheeting. So that's the end of my introduction um, to, a, to Lima Grain. What I would like to do is hand you over to Anne-Sophie, who's in our R&D team, and she'll be introducing you to a new product, which is the Innocence Massa Plus, which will also have at snack X. Over to you, Anne-Sophie. Thank you, Rona. So let's talk about it. So in June 2020, the UK government announced a package of measures aiming to reduce the prevalence of obesity, including legislation to restrict unhealthy food promotion in stores and retails, focused on food HFSS, meaning high in fat, salt and sugar. So it is now concrete and time to practice. So maybe now you would like to reformulate your product to achieve a better HFZ score, if not done yet. First, you need to reduce the bad nutrients to lower the initial score without compromising taste or texture. A hard one. Difficult to reduce salt in snacks without compromising the taste and difficult to reduce fat without compromising texture. Secondly, you need to include ingredients improving HFZ scores thanks to their specific composition and processability, improving fibers and proteins content of your product. And you can also play on adjusting production process to maximize ingredients benefits. So Lima Grain can help you in choosing those ingredients and support you in adjusting process. As an example, uh, we developed the Massa Plus to help you in this way. This is our last innocence Massa flour to make your product non-HFSS compliant. With this ingredient, you will produce a better for your snacking experience with lower fat uptake, more fibers and more proteins. You will still have an authentic corn taste rich in grains and a nice crunchy texture for pleasure and enjoyment. And in essence, Massa Plus is mainly used in tortilla chips, tacos, nachos, and all Tex-Mex applications. The global concept of Massa Plus is to cross specific flower characteristics adjusted, adjusted specifically for an optimized tortilla chips process and process optimization to decrease all absorption during frying steps. We can support you for process optimization and choice of seasoning for the best results. Benefits of this concept are reduce energy level, reduce fat content, enhance protein and fiber content, and crunchy texture. On the right side, we show you three cases. Control tortilla chip is a standard tortilla chip from the market with 25% of fat, 0.8% of salt, 4.3% of fiber, and 4.6% of proteins. This product is HFSS and Nutri-Score C in the 2023 version. Just by replacing standard massa by massa plus, staying at same process parameters, you can be non-HFSS because of increased fibers up to 5.3% and a light decrease of energy from 1,900 kilocalories down to 1,850 kilocalories. It's not much, but you're just at the limit to balance it.
If you want to obtain a better for your product, you can even decrease the fat uptake from these tortilla chips by optimizing process parameters. In this case, we obtain the tortilla chips at 22% of fat. Depending on standard process parameters, lines equipment and product texture and nutrition you want to obtain, you can reach tortilla shift from 20 to 25% of fat. Massa Plus has been developed to adjust hydration in the mixer and to optimize the particle size distribution. All the issue during this process is to reduce oil uptake by two ways. First, reducing moisture of tortilla chip before frying, as in the fryer, there is an exchange between water and oil, and then reducing oil uptake by capillarity as the biggest percentage of fat is pumped just after frying is on the surface of the tortilla chips. So in the first step in the mixer, we can adjust hydration of the dough using Massa Plus. Then we can increase the drying effect uh, by adjusting time and temperature to reduce moisture in the oven. It is nine, nice to make the equilibration step longer to favorize moisture homogeneity and avoid oil pocket as small as it can be, so that before frying, we get less moisture in the tortilla chips. In the fryer, it is better to use unsaturated fat to decrease this negative point in HFS score. Yes, of course, unsaturated fats are more expensive and is more renewal, and they're more sensitive to oxidation. But snack producers are changing their habits, and sunflower oil, for example, is now commonly used. After frying, bigger particles of massa plus allow to reduce oil absorption by capillarity. To optimize the concept, it is important to choose the right seasoning. If it is salt, you need to reduce the salt content. There is more and more snacks on the market with one or less than 1% of salt. Salt can be replaced by sea salt that contains naturally less sodium, or by salt replaces such as potassium chloride. In a, in a seasoning, you can also even replace um, the salt by yeast extract that play its enhancer role. Choosing seasoning with vegetable nuts will surely bring more fibers in the seasoning and less fat than, for example, a cheese flavor, but uh, it brings also less proteins, so you have to make a choice. Seasoning suppliers have solutions now to improve your nutritional value, enhancing fibers and proteins, reducing salt and still having a nice flavor. So um, Givaudan, as an example, developed a nice chicken tex mix flavor going very well with um, tortilla chips that allow the tortilla made with Massa Plus to be non-HFSS and Nutri-Score B, reduced in fat and rich in fiber. So this flavor is described as spicy with grilled and meated roasted nuts and onion flavor. This is something you will, uh, you will be able to test on the SnackX if you join us. The product at the end will be different from standard product consumer I used to, but, not sh not, but for sure, excuse me, healthier for them with still nice and tasty experience. So let's taste and uh, we wish you uh, to see you on the SnackX. Many thanks for your attention. And if you have any question, please feel free to ask. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Anne-Sophie. We are going to open the Q&A session. So as mentioned at the beginning, you can ask questions in the chat. And to do that, you can use the, the question tab at the bottom right of your screen. Please do so. Um, so we already have a, some questions. So maybe a first one for Ophélie. What are the primary eating occasions for UK consumers to consume crisps and what, what specific types do they seek for these occasions? Thank you. Um, yeah, so it's quite interesting actually because the, um, the biggest eating occasion is the evening. So I think when we looked at the number, it was 52% uh, UK consumers eat snacks in the evening, then 47 during daytime as a snack and 42 during lunch. So it's kind of it's kind of split, but there's still um, a majority of, of consumers eating uh, in the evening. And that kind of brings a completely different take on snacking because um, it's obviously if you look at the evening occasion, people are actually less interested in health. They're more interested in treating, trying new flavors, um, sharing with people. So it's also very much linked to kind of at home socializing. Um, 
and they tend to look for crisps that are a bit more premium. So it's, it's slightly different basically than um, consumers who would eat it during the day and look for healthier snacks. And then the lunch occasion, I think, is an interesting one to look at as well, because it used to be such a big occasion for, for the UK, um, especially with promotions. Um, and now with HFSS, it's, it's obviously changed quite a bit. And it's potentially the one that is the most in danger as well, because people cook for themselves a bit more. So Chris don't get included in that. Um, and in fact, you get brands um, like Walkers doing their uh, really big campaign about eating in, eating out to kind of re remind the consumers that, you know, crisps should be um, could be eaten uh, in any kind of uh, situation. So, yeah, kind of three big occasions. And depending on which ones you're targeting, the implication for health are quite different. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, um, next question for Anne-Sophie, how the HFSS works and how can we uh, know if the project is HFSS compliant or not? Okay, uh, so how HFSS works? Um, HFSS, as we said, is high in fat, sugar and salt, so it concerns products sold in um, uh, major UK retail stores, pre-packed products such as drinks, several snacks, breakfast rolls, confectionery, and so on. There's uh, about 13 categories concerned by this uh, legislation. Uh, whether or not your product is HFSS, it depends on nutritional uh, profile of your product. There's a specific calculation, and if the product has a bad scoring of a five, four point, sorry, uh, it will be subject to promotion uh, restrictions. Um, and so, um, if you need to calculate uh, this um, HFSS scoring, you need first to calculate or analyze your product nutrition profile, of course. With this data, you have to calculate the sum of negative points that we call A. Uh, following a table, you will find point scoring for um, uh, the negative points such as energy, saturated fat, sugar, and salt content. Then if this uh, A scoring is less than 11 points, you will have to calculate the sum of positive points, which is the, the C number. The, the same way, you have to look at your tables and um, you have to add the fruit and vegetable contents, fibers and proteins. In case your negative points A is over 11, you have to remove the protein part from the C calculation, from the positive point calculation. And finally, once you have your A number and your C number, you just have to do A minus C and you obtain your HFSS score. And if this score is uh, under four, your product is non-HFSS. I think I just see um, a question about shelf life of Massa. So mm -hmm. um, our shelf life is um, about nine months. Thank you very much. Um, so we have uh, another question in the chat. Chickpea and lentil is botanically related to soy, peanut and lupin. Do you see a risk of chickpea lentil becoming an official allergen in the EU market? Maybe, Ophelia, do you have some insight about that? Um, it's a tricky question. It's not something that I've seen coming up yet, uh, but I can definitely look again um, and follow up with that with more numbers. It's not not something I've seen so far, I have to say. But yeah, we can we can maybe provide some more detail or at least keep an eye on that. Yeah. Thank you very much. Um, maybe a, another question for you. What will be the impact of the HFSS regulations on SNAP consumption in the UK? Um, yeah, so it's, it's, it's still quite tricky to, to know because we're so early days, obviously. Um, so all the regulations about, you know, product placement, promotion, advertising restrictions, all of that is obviously risking to uh, decrease exposure to these, pro to these products um, and potentially decrease consumption as well. But I think what's interesting to focus on is that this is really part of a wider consumer trend. So consumers are wanting to um, have products that are healthier generally. So um, it's it's obviously, you know, 
linked to what consumers are already wanting to see. Um, so I guess the, the biggest impact is not necessarily in the short run going to be in the consumption, is more going to be about reformulating all the snacks um, and is going to be a push from brands to do much more of this. Because I, I covered in my presentation the fact that some high profile brands are doing it. But if we look at the general uh, innovation trends, it's not really going um is it's not really there yet so there's so much more uh, efforts to to be done obviously um and i think something to note as well is the economic factor so i was talking about inflation and how so far it hasn't really impacted this market but if you combine inflation plus the fact that those products are not under promotion, um, it, it's it's obviously could be quite uh, disadvantageous for these products. So it's to understand also if food and drink brands will try to market their healthier product with promotions as well as, or price decreases um, so that they start fitting into something where consumers feel like they can indulge a bit more. I mean, indulging with something a bit healthier because that's that's obviously still something to really consider uh, on the UK market. Great, thank you. Um, and another question related to these trends. So do uh, people still care about gluten free? Personally, I hear very little consumers talked about it compared to five to 10 years ago. Do you think there is uh, still something about gluten free? Um, yeah, it's it's much less uh, widespread than it was uh, when I started at Minta, actually, maybe 10 years ago. Um, so I, I wouldn't say it's, it's as much of a trend from the consumer point of view. But what's interesting is that you, the trends in innovation are really showing that this is still a focus of brands. Um, I'll, I'll just put my... Uh, graphic in front of me again um, but yeah it's like so if you if if we can look at my graphic uh, about I, those uh, those numbers are in the deck is between um, 30 and 40 percent of innovation um, annually that is focusing on gluten free so it's quite interesting because it's still a trend that is driving this market even though the consumers are not necessarily ah uh, yeah sorry you, you're going back um, even though the consumers are not necessarily um, yeah, this one. Oh, sorry. No, the one after. Yeah. So you can see it's still quite a big driver. I mean, it's a much bigger driver than things like low fat, for example, in this market, um, which is, you know, it could be because uh, there's a lot of launches of uh, tortilla chips and all that are not using wheat based product or just repositioning potato chips as gluten free, obviously. Um, but it's interesting to, to see that it's still a driver. From the consumer point of view, it's much less of a driver than it was 10 years ago. So I think the driver will be more, um, not necessarily talking about the gluten, but saying, you know, this uh, alternative ingredients got all these other properties. It's high in fiber, it's high in protein, etc. So when we're talking about pulses, for example, I think the, moti the, the key motivation is not that they're gluten free. It's all the other things they bring, basically. Um, but yeah, something um, something obviously that is is still an added bonus if you want to claim that on your back. <laughs> OK, great. Thank you very much. Just something maybe to, to mention if you have a question related to, to Innocence Maza Plus, we'll be happy to discuss it after the webinar. So don't hesitate to leave us also a message in the in the chat or in the question tab and we'll get back to you personally to present it in, in more details if you have any questions. Great. So maybe we could enter it. <laughs> Just looking at the slide. Great. Uh, so thank you very much. Uh, this is the end of this webinar. And we, we hope it was a very insightful presentation for you. Thank you very much to all our speakers. If you want to taste Innocence, Maza Plus, or all the product of our range, come and visit us at the Snack X. Rona and Sophie and all the team will be very happy to meet you there. So one more time, thank you very much. And um, of course, have a, have a nice day.